right, guys, so here's my phone. I'm scanning, uh, this is actually me scanning a personal collection. So I'm still using my phone. I'm not using the Bluetooth scanner. Uh, so I am going a little bit slower, but I'm gonna walk you through why I would pick up these books or why I would. And welcome to the freaking well show and party central to my well ones a night of violated hell code. So assuming that I'm paying one dollar per book, which is what you guys will pay at thrift stores, libraries, uh, and when it comes to people's personal collections, I have videos on how to quote those books. I will link those videos below. I'm not going to go into how to offer money for books because sometimes you'll come across books that are worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So there's not a flat rate to offer people for their books. But for this book here, you can see it turn green. So when it turns green, that means you should accept it. But if I was paying a dollar for this book, I wouldn't pick it up because I like to set the buy cost to zero because oftentimes I'm at places where the buy cost might be $5. It might be $1. It might be, might be $3. So I like to just set it at zero and just do the math in my head. Uh, the math isn't that hard. So I, I see I'd rather get more accepts than less, to, less accepts. Does that make sense? I'd rather get false positives than false negatives. I don't want to leave something on the shelf that I should have accepted. So I'm going to lower these triggers low enough to where I can, you know, really see uh, what the app thinks is profitable. And these are just the default triggers for Scott IQ. Uh, so I have different trigger sets I use, but these are just the default triggers. And these are great. Uh, the default triggers are awesome. So 218, I'd leave that on the shelf because it's really only a dollar 18. It's not worth me spending a dollar. Uh, to make a dollar. And there's something weird going on here with this book. Uh, this is the book Atomic Habits. You see over here to the left, the used buy box is more uh, than Amazon price. We cannot bank on this book selling for $22. Although uh, right now I bet it's selling for 22. So this book's actually selling for 22, but I that's not going to last for too long. I don't think um, this orange box here in Scott IQ, a lot of people ask, why does this orange box jump around? You'll see it move uh, as Let's go to the next one. We'll see if it moves. So it's going to go from Amazon to use buy box. So it's the reason why the orange box is on Amazon right now. The orange box is what price is it, is it comparing to? Uh, it's because it knows we can't sell it for more than Amazon. You're never going to sell a book for more than Amazon. So what it's doing is it, it highlights Amazon and it discounts in Amazon 10%. So for this book, the book is $11. It's going to discount this $1 and uh, 12 cents. So it's gonna subtract a dollar 12 cents. It's gonna assume that we sell this FBA for 10% less than Amazon and uh, it's not profitable. And the app rejected it. It's only a dollar 58 profit. I would leave that on the shelf. Now, again, I have all different types of triggers. If this was in my possession, if I had it for free, I would go ahead and send this book in because it's got 2K rank. So sales rank is how, how frequently the book sells according to Amazon. That's an Amazon generated metric. And then e-score is a metric uh, generated by the, the app Scott IQ itself. Uh, this is how many days the book had at least one day with the sale. So this has sold over 151 times in the last six months. This e-score extends to six months. So if the e-score is two, that means it's only sold twice in the last six months. So the app rejected it, which is good. So you will come across barcodes just like that one. I'll back up a little bit. Uh, this is either a counterfeit book or just a poorly printed book or just sometimes printers make errors. You see the barcodes are too close to each other. A, a, a Bluetooth scanner might be able to pick that up, but uh, you're likely gonna have to type this one in. And beware, if it's a textbook or something that looks like this, it's probably a counterfeit textbook. Okay, the body keeps score. This is a great book. Um, again, it's compared to the Amazon price because the Amazon price is uh, just slightly more than the used buy box. So this app is, it's the app's really smart because it's comparing to the Amazon price because it knows that we're not going to sell it for more than Amazon. That's why it's not comparing it to the used price. So you'll see this orange box jump around, but it's still $8 profit, even if we sell it for $19 or $18 because it's discounting it 10%. So it's going to discount it 10% from 20, which is about 18 bucks. So subtracting $2. That's how that math works. Harry Potter. A lot of people think you can sell Harry Potter for profit. You can't, you're going to lose a dollar if you try that power positive thinking. Let's see how this does. Nope. A lot of the popular books won't do too well, although some will. So uh, keep your eyes out. That was a $4 profit book, uh, $10 profit here. That's a, this is a great book guys. Sorry. I'm a book nerd. Uh, Release the brakes, release your brakes. This is a phenomenal book. 
on how to reach your full potential. Uh, this book's all about, you know, um, releasing your breaks, releasing your negative thought patterns, those patterns holding you back. It's an old book too. Uh, again, it's it's comparing against Amazon's price. Even though the used buy box is twenty one dollars, Amazon's price is twenty three. So the reason why it's comparing to Amazon is when it compares to Amazon, it discounts it 10%. I'm going to keep saying this time and time again, because I didn't get this for a few months until I started scanning books. So I really want to hammer this point down. So it's subtracting $2.30 from $23. Uh, and that is going to be less than $21.66. So if the used buy box was 18, it would compare to the used buy box. But in this case, it's not. Let's move on. Look for some other weird stuff. So most of these books I would accept. Okay, this is a great book, $40 profit. Uh, there's not, so these two columns here, you see they're pretty empty right now. I love it when these are empty because that means there's not that much used competition. There's only three used offers, three new offers. This FBA column is completely empty. That means there's no FBA offers and uh, the used buy box is $53.79. So the reason why this orange box is going after the third offer here is it knows that we can sell it for more than the used buy box. Because if you guys notice, and I have a whole video on this and I'll break this video, I'll add this video below, but uh, the used buy box, whenever the used buy box matches the low merchant, this is a tricky scenario. What that means is a merchant owns the buy box. So when a merchant owns the buy box, that means an FBA seller does not. So if a merchant owns the buy box, that means likely there are no FBA offers. And if there's no FBA offers, we could price this book at whatever we want because there's no FBA competition. So we could probably price this book at 60, 70 bucks. Um, so keep an eye out for whenever this used buy box matches 53.79 and the app scout IQ does that for you. So this is uh, this is beautiful. So let's pretend just to give you guys a better picture and hopefully some more of the examples I look at will show you, but let's pretend that this third price was $60 instead, then the profit would be going up to like almost 50 bucks. So the profit would increase because the price would increase, but there's only like a couple cent difference here but the app doesn't recognize, you know, giant price bumps. Like this could even be 10,000 and the app would still go third in line. The app is programmed when this magical set of numbers with the sales rank, e-score, uh, number of used offers, it's gonna compare to the third in line because the app is smart. The app knows that we can get more than the lowest offer right now because this is a pretty high demand book, 44K rank. Zero to one, zero to brand. This is also a great book. So this is uh, this is eighteen dollars Amazon, seven dollars profit, three K rank. It's sold over one hundred fifty one times in the last six months. This is a great book. Okay, so this is an interesting scenario. The used buy box is eleven ninety five, but it's still comparing to Amazon. The reason why it's comparing to Amazon is like, hey, look. Amazon's on this listing. It wants you to know that Amazon's on the listing. Uh, I would actually like it if it would compare to the used buy box in this case, because you're actually gonna sell it for 11, which is really gonna bring down that profit closer to like $2. But it is good to know when Amazon's on the listing. This is also a, a fairly high demand book. It's got an e-score of 85. That means it sold 85 times in the last six months. Let's keep going. Okay, let's look at this. No e-score. So when it has no e-score, that just means the data is not available. So it doesn't mean that the book hasn't sold in the last six months, but when this e-score comes up as two dash lines, that means it just doesn't have the data available. Now, if this came up as zero, that means the data was available and the book hasn't sold in the last six months. So it's better when it comes up as this because there, there's still hope. The rank is 1.5 million. That is... Uh, that's not great, but it's, it probably sells, I don't know, eight to 10 times a year. Um, that's what it should sell at. Uh, sales ranks a, a weird one because sales rank, one thing you have to know about sales rank is it can change in a couple minutes. If someone purchases a, a 1.5 million rank book, uh, the sales rank will drop to a hundred thousand at least, if not lower. So the sales rank is constantly fluctuating. So 
we don't we can't really say that this book has sold eight times in the last year but we know that the sales ranks 1.5 million and that's not bad again it's comparing to the second offer you see the orange box is going down one uh, it's just doing that because the rank this is still a medium demand book it's not a super high rank book high rank books are above two or three million this is still kind of a decent book and it's only got two offers so it knows that if we send this in fba the low the used buy box is 1555 that's the low merchant that means there's no fba competition we could sell this prime for probably 30 bucks so that's why it's comparing to 19 it's like hey look dude you can get a lot more for this book than if we if, than if you sell it for the low price okay real quick i, I do want to say the wife of the creator of this app when she when she lists the books for him she'll actually look at the orange box she told me this she'll look at the orange box to price her books because when you go to list this book uh, the lowest offer is twelve dollars you don't want to list it at twelve you're gonna be losing money you want to list it at 15 you want to list it at not whatever the app recommends but the app does recommend some good prices sometimes the app considers a lot of this data and it makes a decision for you and it moves the box without you having to think too much so that's a pro tip right there if you want to do that she's a very smart woman and he's a very smart man so whenever i hear smart people say things i take note shoe dog shoe dog's a great book about the founder of nike um but this is not very profitable amazon's selling it for 10 bucks again if i had this book for free i'd ship it in but it's only gonna make me a dollar paulo coelho love this author um but not very profitable books. It's let's see here. This is a this is a scenario where a lot of people would ask me questions. So we have the profit at two dollars and forty one cents, and it still rejected it. So people are gonna be like, "Why is it rejecting it when it's two dollars profit?" Well, it's like, dude, if you want a two dollar profit book, which isn't bad, you can send two dollar. I send two dollar profit books in all day um, if I have them in my possession. I'm not I'm not gonna go out and buy two dollar profit books, but if if I got a free pickup or if I already purchased like a lot of books and I was scanning them, if it makes me 50 cents profit, I'm going to send it in, but I'm not going to spend money to maybe make $2. Cause if, if this price fluctuates, that money is instantly gone. The profit's gone. If this goes down $2 in price, all the profits out the window. So I don't want to spend money to, to maybe make a dollar or two. That's just my philosophy. But the reason why it rejected this is the default trigger set on scout IQ. I believe the first trigger is $2 and 50 cents. So even if it's two dollars and forty nine cents, it's going to reject it because it doesn't fall in the profit threshold. So a lot of people ask, why is it rejecting profitable books? That's why. If you have a problem with it, go in and look at the rank. The rank's one seventeen thousand, and uh, say w whenever the rank's one seventeen thousand, I want it to accept the book as long as it's a dollar profit. Great. Now it's going to accept it as long as it's a dollar profit. Also. I mentioned at the beginning, you can add buy cost if you want to, uh, but you don't have to. Um, I like to actually leave this at zero because, again, I like to get more false positives than false negatives. The Way of a Superior Man, also a great book. $6.66 profit. Amazon's on a lot of these listings. Okay, we have uh, $7 profit. I would pick that up. Okay, 86 cents profit. Sales rank is 7.3 million. The E score is zero. That means it definitely has not sold in the past six months. So, um, this book, this book is actually by one of my followers. I let the cat out of the bag. This is my personal collection. That's why I know all these books. This, this book is by Katie Reed. Shout out Katie Reed. I just scanned your book in a YouTube video. Uh, she's going to get a kick out of that. She's, she's one of my followers and she's done well with, uh, with selling books. Um, and hopefully she's doing well selling her own books, but this book has is 7.3 million rank. That means it hasn't sold in the last six months, according to the e score. But again, just because the app rejects it, uh, I still like. I still like to have my eye out for super profitable books. That's why the last trigger for default Scout IQ, the default triggers are great, guys. Uh, a lot of people want different triggers. I do have a couple different trigger sets I go over. Uh, I give them to my course members. I give all the different trigger sets, but really the default triggers are great because let's say a book is 7.3 million rank and it's $50 profit. Would you want to perhaps just look at that and see maybe, maybe it does sell? I want the app to make me look at it, which 
by look at it, I mean like draw attention to me by dinging green, by making the cash noise. I want to get notified when a book is $50 profit, even if it's over 7 million ranks. So the, the first, one of the last triggers in uh, the default trigger set is if it's over like 5 million rank, it's something like $50 profit. If this book was, you know, a $70, $80 book, it would notify me. And then I can be like, okay, like this book doesn't sell very often, but when it does sell, it makes me a lot of money because I want to get notified for that. So if you guys use the Scout IQ default triggers, you will get notified for that. Okay, we have $8 profit, negative $2 profit. And most books you scan aren't going to be good. This is because it's a personal collection. Personal collections, you'll get about anywhere from a 10 to 50. That's five zero percent accept rate. You'll get uh, pretty high accept rates for personal collections. So it's always great to, to go into people's houses and scan their books. That's why raw books are so good. Raw donated books, dollar profit, uh, e scores 52. This, this book's not great. Fooled by randomness. That is also not profitable, but I want to read that book. I've heard that book is, is a really good book. So this is a $2 and 70 cent profit book. Now, if I, if I had to pay a dollar for it, I wouldn't pick it up, but since it, since it's already in my possession, uh, I probably will sell that one day. Uh, it's, this is also a pretty good book. Words that work. I hope my words are working right now on you guys. I hope you guys are understanding these concepts. If you guys are, drop a comment below if you like videos like this. I've been requesting this video a lot. A lot of people are like, I just wish someone would sit down and scan a bunch of books and walk me through it. So uh, again, here, here's where we see both columns are empty. And whenever you see both columns are empty, that just means there's a lot of, or very few offers. So there's very few offers available, which I really like that because it means there's low competition. So the e-score is only 16, which isn't high demand, but since there's no, since there's not that much used competition, uh, you could probably sell this book pretty fast, but Amazon is on the listing at $17. So I probably come in at like 13 or 14 and you can probably get the sale. Um, I would even try coming in used, you know, just for a couple cents less than Amazon and see if, see if you can sell the book in the next, uh, you know, month. And if you don't get that sale, then, then drop it a little bit. Tony Robbins, perhaps the greatest self-help guru of our time, but doesn't have profitable books. Unfortunately, only eight, only $8 profit. Love the man, but can't make money selling his books on Amazon. Okay. This one has 3.1 million rank E score of four. So it sold four times in the last six months. Uh, used buy box, not even available. This isn't a terrible situation. If I had this in my possession, I'd, I'd list it because there's no used offers. So I know for sure if someone buys this, and this is actually another friend of mine who, who wrote this or a friend of a friend who wrote this book, never give up, but uh, it'll, it'll sell eventually. Uh, it has an e-score of four, so it has a history of selling. So I would come in at used probably about 12, $12. The new price is 15. Okay, I love these. Uh, love these profitable books. $38 and it comes out to 28 profit e score of 15. Hopefully you guys get the hang of this. Another Tony Robbins book, 52 cents profit on that one, $11 profit on that one. So I'm going to blaze through these last ones and then I'm, I'm going to break down, uh, the bottom of the app has a lot going on. So I'm going to break that down for you guys in a second. Reject that negative 36 cents profit, negative $7 profit. Hold on. Let's go back here. This is a good scenario. This is a, this is perfect right here. This is what I'm looking for. This is profit left on the shelves. Let's look at this, uh, reject. That was a false negative. It should not have rejected this. So it's saying negative $7 profit. I guess it's just basing that off of the fees. Cause I don't know what it put in as the price. It probably put zero as the price, but this is a, a rank of 60 K in an e-score of 151 and there's currently no used or new offers. This is a perfect book. I don't know the, I don't know the history of what this book sells for, but since no, there's nobody selling this book right now, you could probably list this for whatever you want. Uh, probably 20 to 30% above what it used to sell for and get the sale. So if you want to see what this book used to sell for, all you need to do is click on this Keepa graph at the bottom. This is actually Scout IQ. It's not Keepa. And you can look at uh, the Keepa graph. And I'll, I'll also link a video below how to read Keepa graphs, but it's essential to know how to read a Keepa graph if you want to flip books like this. Uh, th now this book has such high demand. Um, 
it's going to sell probably the day it touches down. So I would, uh, I'd send this in. I'd, I'd look at what it used to sell for. Let's say it used to sell for $30. I'd send it in at 20% more. So I'd, I'd send it in at like 36, 40 bucks. And, um, I, I would get the sale because this is a very high demand book. Those false negatives, you've got to look out for those and watch the video below because I, I really do break down uh, the most commonly left books on the shelves by uh, Amazon FBA sellers. Grant Cardone, the 10X rule. You make $3 selling that book. Now, if you swipe right on the Scout IQ app, it's gonna display all the exact same data on the second page, so it's gonna look exactly the same, but uh, just in a different format. I don't like to ha have it like this. This will actually turn yellow if it's like medium demand, it'll turn red if it's low demand. I don't like the way this looks. I like having everything like this. You can actually see more with this because it shows you all the numbers. I like to look at all the numbers. I'm a numbers guy. This doesn't show you as much, and it kind of does some thinking for you. The app's already doing enough thinking for me. So when I do look at the screen, I want to see as much data as possible. So I look at that page. And if you swipe all the way right, it'll tell you how many scans and what your acceptance rate is. So we had a 40% accept rate on my personal bookshelf. And this is common. When you go into people's houses, you'll, you know, you'll, you'll get upwards 50%, maybe even higher. So yeah, I'm going to show you guys the very bottom. I said I would show you guys what all these different uh, links are. So from left to right, this is a custom link right here. So that's good for if you want to add Keepa, you can add Keepa in there. I'm not exactly sure how to set that up. Uh, I just use Scout IQ or I use Scout uh, Chart IQ uh, right here. And whenever I want to look at Keepa, because there are benefits to using Keepa, uh, I just open it up on my phone, a separate tab. When you click on live, it's gonna do a live search. So let's say you downloaded the database, which has all the Amazon data up to the moment you downloaded it. Let's say you downloaded the database a couple weeks ago or even a couple months ago. I, I've, I've used really old databases before because I'm lazy. And also, I wanna purchase books that have a history of selling. So if it sold three months ago, uh, it's likely going to sell in the next three months. So that's why I'm not huge on downloading the database every day. That's just me. A lot of people disagree with me, but I, I think that having an older database is valuable. But what I would do is when I scan a book that's profitable, let's say it says $5 profit, I'll click live and maybe it goes down to $1 profit. So I know in the past it was profitable and I know that now it's not. So maybe in the future it will be. And if I want to really nerd out over it, I can open up a Keepa graph and I can uh, analyze the price history. And I can make a buying decision that way. So having a live search is good because you can uh, you can look up the data um, for that same day on Amazon. This uh, bookshelf icon that's bookscouter.com, you can look to see if other vendors are purchasing the books. I'm trying to get on there pretty soon. I have restrictedinventory.com. So like, let's say someone scans a, a textbook they can't sell. You scan a textbook you can't sell. You could either send it to restrictedinventory.com, my service for selling your popular textbooks at a 50-50 split net profit, or you could send it to Bookscouter and get cash instantly. Um, you probably want to do whatever pays you more. So it's good to open up Bookscouter and see, okay, someone's paying you know, $13 for this book. I could send it to that buyback company, or I could send it to restrictedinventory.com and make $50 off of it. Whatever the best scenario is and vice versa, like maybe restrictedinventory.com will make you less profit after the 50-50 split. Just do the math. Uh, so Bookscouter is great to have in your arsenal. Uh, the Amazon link down here, this is, this is uh, the cleanest data you're gonna get, the most accurate data um, from Amazon themselves. Uh, this is gonna pull up Amazon app on your phone. So it's gonna pull up the Amazon app and you can search through the app and you can see, you know, how many prime, really the reason why you wanna open that up is to see how many prime offers there are. Because any third party app, whether it's Scout IQ, any of the other guys, uh, reprice it, any type of repricer, they only have access to the lowest 15 offers. So um, oftentimes the FBA offers aren't in the lowest 15. And I break this down all in the video below where I talk about uh, the most commonly left uh, books on the shelves. I talk about this whole predicament, but uh, in order to combat this predicament, you want to click on the Amazon seller app and look at the prime offers. So like, let's say everybody's selling the book for $5. All the merchants are doing it. Let's say the lowest 20 offers are $5. 
Well, if the prime offer is $25, you can likely sell that book for $25 if the demand's there. So that's why it's important to have that there. It took me a while to figure that out. I was like, why does it have the Amazon app there or the Amazon uh, icon there? It's to open up the Amazon app and really see what are the prime offers. So that is it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more content like this, comment below. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. I'll make videos to answer them. Like, comment, subscribe. We got more content coming like this in the future. Peace out, family. Look, grind hard, well done, sir. And welcome to the freaking well show. And party central to my well ones. A night of violated hell codes. Dope sells like the charge do. But selling's all about potential. And money speaks, and I'm the main act. I give a damn about the intro. And chain hangs in the building. Just to let them know the network.